Hi kids, I'm not Dan, and for story time today, I'm going to read you The Story of the Atom. It's Okay kids, make sure that everyone is sitting crisscross applesauce and that you keep your hands to yourself. Our story begins hundreds of years ago in a magical land called England. And there lived a man named John Dalton. Now Dalton is considered the father of modern atomic theory. He said that all atoms were tiny, solid, indivisible spheres, and there was nothing smaller than the atom. He also said that when atoms form compounds, they come together in whole number ratios. He called his model the billiard ball model, because like a billiard ball, atoms couldn't be split into anything smaller. The next scientist on our list is named J.J. Thompson. Now, J.J. Thompson was actually not really trying to find anything about the atom, but he happened to be working with a piece of equipment called the cathode ray tube, which is the precursor to today's television tubes. Now, in this ray tube, there was simply a beam of energy. And one day, Thompson happened to bring a magnet next to that beam, and guess what? It bent. The energy moved as a direct result of the magnetic field. This led Thompson to do a lot more observations and a lot of really high level math calculations and he discovered the electron. The first subatomic particle to be discovered was the electron and it has a negative charge. Now Thompson decided, or thought, that the electron was actually on the inside of the atom. And he called his model the Plum Pudding Model. Now, if you are like me and are from America, that may not mean a lot to you. So we can call this model the Chocolate Chip Cookie Model. Because like the chocolate chips, the electrons are on the inside surrounded by the positive dough. Okay, moving on. The next scientist was one of Thompson's students who went by the name of Ernest Rutherford. Now Rutherford did a very famous experiment called the gold foil experiment. And in that experiment, he took a thin piece of gold foil, just like aluminum foil except made out of gold, put it in the middle, and on one side he had a special screen that could register radioactive particles, and on the other side was an alpha particle generator. This alpha particle generator would create alpha particles, which are nothing more than positive radioactive particles. Now he thought that when he shot all of these particles at the gold foil, that everything would go through because Thompson's model suggested that that's what would happen. But that's not what happened. Instead, as you can see, some of the particles went all the way through, but some of them bounced back. This led Rutherford to say, it was like taking a shotgun and shooting it at a piece of tissue paper and having the bullet ricochet back. That was so surprising to Rutherford. So after a lot more observations and calculations, he realized that the atom had a positive particle in the center called the proton. So he rearranged the atomic model to have the protons in the center that he called the nucleus and the electrons on the outside. And he called his model the planetary model because just like planets orbiting around a sun, the electrons were orbiting around the nucleus. The next scientist, whose name is Niels Bohr. 
Now Niels Bohr did a much more sophisticated version of the flame test that you saw a couple videos ago. And using those flames, he was able to calculate and quantify all of the energy levels where the electrons can be found. So in his model, the protons are still in the nucleus and the electrons are, are around the outside in very specific energy levels. And he called his model the Bohr model. And last but not least is a scientist by the name of James Chadwick. Now Chadwick took a look at the current model that Bohr had proposed and realized that the mass of the protons was not adding up to the mass of the entire atom. And therefore, there must be something else in the atom, a neutrally charged particle that he called the neutron. And the neutron is also in the nucleus with the proton. And so when he put his model together, it's really just an updated version of the Bohr model, which essentially is the same model that we use today. Well, I hope you liked that story. If you have any further questions about it, please comment below and I will get back to you. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Waiting on a train.